Hello and welcome to this week's video. I've moved my introduction to the end because it was too long. So stay tuned to watch that for some exciting wood turning events happening this year. Uh, details below. Also, details below of how you can buy one of my mugs. Right, on with the project. And this week's project is another one of those out with the old and in with the new. I've forgotten what I'd done to the front of this one. Um, but anyway, it's all come off now and just uh, sanding it down, getting it smooth and ready for a variation of a centrifuge technique. Um, but before I get to the centrifuge technique, just to explain why it's all covered with paint by the time I do the centrifuge colours, um, I've kept this footage in to show, um, well, what not to do. If any of you have seen my demos where I use spray can paint and put layers of paint over each other and then um, remove parts of each colour with a bit of paper, I was trying something similar with um, acrylic paints here that, um, well, shall I be kind and say it shows promise um, or shall I promise not to try this kind of thing again? Anyway, even my favoured go-to, I've got to get out of this mess of putting, by putting yellow on something, didn't really cut the mustard on this one. So, um, useful lesson learned. Wiped it all off and uh, get down to something else. Coming up very soon. Here we go. I'm just going to blob, hence the name, blobby centrifuge. Uh, chestnut, this is their iridescent blue. Uh, then I use, uh, I think it's metallic white. Um, just, as you can see, working quite quickly. Blobbing the paint on uh, in gaps. It's overlapping somewhere. You can see the colours mixing together. The white in the centre is not as white as it was to begin with. And this is chestnut's iridescent red. Um, so it's the same colours that I put on before, but um, I'm going to try to uh, salvage something worth worth looking at. I think I'd just about do it in this one. Here's the last colour then, a little bit of the iridescent yellow and dabbed on. It would have been better if I put them in separate pots really, rather than putting them in the middle of the bowl, because I had to keep cleaning that out. Luckily, it's of a size that it fits in my hand easily, so I can get the back on the lathe. Um, it was kept in the chuck. And here we have it spinning, waiting to reveal what actually happens when you blob colours on. And, hmm, yes. I think this does show more promise than the previous version. Um, but you know me, I'm never one to spin something once or to leave something spinning alone. So I've got some water down or thin down uh, metallic black here. It was a bit of a mistake putting it on, I think, while the colours were still wet. I will one day learn patience. Um, however, I am stubborn, so I had another go and span it a little bit faster, again while the colours were still wet, to see what uh, effect that gave me. And surprise, surprise, rather sort of muddy coloured lines, uh, which you briefly saw there. Anyway, uh, I think I thought, well, I'll just turn the middle out and see what it looks like because sometimes lifting, it lifts the piece when you've got the wood in the middle showing. But with this one, uh, even though I think it improved it, made it look a bit more designed, having uh, the middle turned out, it's still a bit too uh, dull, even though there's those very vibrant colors there. So I was patient. I waited till it was dry and then I put some metallic white and then some metallic black uh, centrifugal lines on. And I think here you can see that really lifts the contrast and actually starts to make it look a bit more interesting to my eye. It did at times remind me, do you remember that sweet you could get as kids, uh, rainbow rice or something? I can't remember what it was called, but bits of puffed rice colored all different colors. Anyway, here we are turning out the middle and actually turning more of the middle out. Um, I thought that that would give a much better uh, final finished look to it to have a to have a narrower rim um, rather than having the dark line around the center. 
Although I know a lot of people like to have their coloured rims framed in some way. But for me, that was an improvement and it was worth putting up as a video uh, to show another salvaged um, botched piece of yuck. This looks horrible. My normal finish in the centre, a little bit of chestnuts cut and polish, which I also put over the edge just to give a little bit of sheen, but um, I'm not keeping it. So I didn't bother with something too shiny. There, not too shabby. Well, here it is, and I know it's rather small. Uh, it doesn't show up very well in the, in the picture here, but it does show that, um, well, what does it show? Right, here it is. Um, it's been through several versions, hasn't it? Uh, I'm pleased that I did actually put on some some black and some white centrifuge paint. It's lifted the contrast a bit. Um, there's no shine, no finish on this other than a little bit of, of um, cut and polish. Um, I would want to get a shinier finish on the outside rim if I were going to keep it. Um, still images I think will show you um, a bit more of the vibrancy of it. But it is easy when you put lots of colour on to end up with something rather muddy and sludgy looking. Um, I think I might call this one coloured mud pie. Give a bit of a clue as to the fact that it was just slapped on and spun around. But that's what this all this has all been about for me. Just playing, trying something, seeing what happens. And from that, well, who knows? I might get an idea for something that looks a bit better. Playtime is over. Until next time, thanks for watching. Clearing out some drawers at the weekend, I found this sticker, which I haven't put up on my sticker board yet. Um, and it reminded me that I really haven't done something I've intending, intending to do for a while, which is to, you know, mention the Association of the Wood Turners of Great Britain. Brilliant organisation. Um, every two years they do a wonderful seminar. Um, the seminar, next seminar is this year, 2020, um, at a place called Yarnfield, which is near Stafford. Um, uh, near nearest town, I think, is called Stone. Um, but uh, check out the details on their website. It's an absolutely fantastic weekend. Um, I'm hoping to go, although my October is looking rather full at the moment. But if I can get there at all, I will. A whole host of world-renowned uh, expert wood turners. Something for everyone there, and such a lot of inspiration and um, great social event as well. So um, two things to look forward to um, for wood turners this year. The wood turning seminar, AWGB, and of course Chestnut Products uh, Wood Turning Weekender, which is returning in August. A bit nearer to home for me this year. Anyway, links are below and hope to see many of you at either or both of those events. Right, I'm going to crack on and uh, do what you've really come here to see, which is some turning and some colouring. I hope. Anyway, let's get on with it. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I'm going to click the button now. <laughs>